Hey, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this project I'm working on right now. It involves cast iron. Um, I found, actually my wife Kate found some old small cast iron pans that were just horrible. Uh, and so I thought I'd go ahead and clean them up. So what I did was I went ahead and sprayed them with uh, Easy Off Oven Cleaner, which is supposed to take all the old seasoning off. Uh, because they were really awful. Um, similar to this one, this is a pan she found uh, way deep in our cabinets. Uh, just to, the other day, I didn't even know we had it, uh, or otherwise I would have cleaned it when I cleaned these. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you the process of how these are working out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this one and put it over the side here. And I'm gonna take a little skillet and put it over the side here as well talk about it in just a minute and I want to show you how these are coming along see all this goo in there that is the old season yuck these have been sitting for two days Pretty nasty. Let me put this away. I'm wearing gloves because uh, this Easy Off Oven Cleaner contains lye and it's very caustic. Anyway, these are how the pans look. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and clean them up a little bit and I'll show you that whole process. Try not to spray any of the camera. All right, well, they still got a little ways to go, as you can see. Still a good a bit of this uh, goo on it right here. Probably have another treatment. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let them dry. This is actually, on the inside here, is getting quite nice. This, this one has a number five on it. Uh, I don't know exactly what that means. Um, does have a unique handle with an H on it and again I don't know what that means either uh, this one seems to have nothing on it but it does have a heat ring which means that it's got a little bit of age to it uh, so if anybody out there knows uh, anything about these pans with the ring uh, I'll do a close-up of the handle as well and with this, uh, with this H on the handle and a five right here. Maybe it's a five inch pan, I guess. That's what it could be. Anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and let these dry and then we're gonna put another coating of Easy Off on them and put them back in that nasty old bag. And one of the cool things I learned about uh, cast iron when I was um, looking at some YouTube videos, there are quite a, a lot of good ones out there. Well, you can tell a lot about a griddle. This is our favorite griddle that we use. Um, it's got an S or an 8 right here. I'm not going to clean this one because, again, it's in good shape. It's got good seasoning. Um, however, what we learned about it is if you flip it over, you'll notice it's got a heat ring right here. The heat ring was so that it could sit on the old wooden stoves. It would fit right down in the actual wooden eye where the heat would come in directly. It's got an S right here as well. But the important thing about this pan is, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got what's called uh, a gate mark. That's the line right here. And a gate mark uh, 
is when they actually broke the mold to take the pan out of the mold because you only use the mold one time. The gate mark signifies a pan that was made before 1880. So 1880, that's already about 140 years ago, if my math's correct. Uh, so this pan is 140 years old. Um, it's incredible that we still use it. I had no idea that we had it. Uh, I don't know where I got it. I'm probably off a movie set somewhere from, you know, working with the set dressing and the props, but you can clearly see it's got a gate mark. And I just think that's so cool. And it's still a great pan. We cook burgers on it. We've cooked steaks on it. We blacken shrimp on it, do all kind of things. So it's a 140 year old pan, at least a 140 year old pan. Okay, our pans are good and dry as you can see. Uh, they've got a little bit of uh, that rust coming in there. What we're not going to do, we're not going to do this one. We don't have enough easy off in here. So we're going to save this for another day. But I've got these ready to go. I'm going to um, spray them. Uh, when I spray them, I'm just not going to talk. Make sure that you always wear safety glasses and gloves when you uh, spray these, because this is lye, you don't want to be breathing it and we're outside. You should probably wear maybe a, a, a mask or something, but we've got a little bit of breeze blowing, so it should be fine out here. Again, I'm not gonna talk uh, while I'm spraying this stuff because I don't want to suck in any of the fumes. I'll wait till I get them into the bag before I say anything else. All right. Okay, they're in here they're probably gonna sit for another two days and we'll give you an update uh, when they're ready hey so uh, we've just finished rinsing the pans with the easy off it took a lot longer than I expected it took three or four coats of easy off and probably five or six days uh, of continuously rinsing and then drying and recoating but we finally got them down to a bare metal here uh, there's a little bit of rust on them so we're gonna take care of that with uh, a half vinegar, half water solution, and some steel wool. One of the things that appeared as uh, I was cleaning these is uh, this one says uh, eight inch skillet. And this one, a five and an H appeared um, down at the bottom there underneath all the old seasoning. So it's pretty interesting. We'll maybe uh, figure out how old some of these pans are a little bit later. Anyway, so I'm going to spray some of this all over. This is a vinegar and water mixture. And then go over it with some steel wool. And I will keep doing this until there's no more rust in these pans. And then I'm gonna coat them with a little bit of oil uh, so that we don't get the, the fast dust rust or the micro rust uh, coming back before we're able to get them into the oven. All right, so these pans are ready to go into the house to be washed. They're nice and clean. And then we'll season them. Hey, okay, so we're back from uh, putting these pans in the oven for a couple of times and curing them. They turned out really well. They're nice and slick here. The backside got nice and hard as well. Well seasoned. I'm gonna let you take a look at these so you can see what's written on the back of these pans. The 5H and the 8 inch skillet H. And you got an H here as well. 
this is what the interior of the pans look like. And before I forget, if anybody has any idea about this uh, old skillet with the gate mark on the back, um, just go ahead and, and write a comment down below and let me know what you think of it. And if you know about the origin of these pans as well, uh, if you have any idea, go ahead and um, put a comment down below about where you think these pans came from, who, were the, who was the uh, manufacturer, uh, who was the manufacturer of the pans. Um, I'm sure it's pretty distinctive. I can't quite find out all the information. Um, so now with these pans done, the main thing we need to do is test out how they cook. So we're gonna cook uh, a beautiful filet mignon and see how it turns out. All right, the pan's ready. A little bit of butter goes in. And this big fatty boy steak goes in. All right, the steak's going into the oven. Alexa, stop timer. This old pan worked perfectly and the steak was delicious. Be sure to like the video and subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.